Fora TV. The world is thinking. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Elliot Gerson, and I am absolutely delighted on behalf of our sponsor for this track, Allstate, to introduce uh, our next speaker. Uh, Sam Harris is the author of, of two best-selling books, uh, The End of Faith and Letter to a Christian Nation. Uh, he has uh, appeared on countless uh, uh, television shows, he's written in many publications, and indeed one could almost say that he was the first to launch a recent and very substantial intellectual uh, uh, and literary uh, trend in the United States carrying over into Europe, uh, where people speak very seriously about faith and the lack of faith. Uh, his, uh, he's a graduate in philosophy from Stanford. He's studied uh, religion extensively over many, many years. He's also one of, I probably because of the best-selling status of his books and the demand for him as a speaker, he is very slow in getting his doctorate in neuroscience, but he assures me he will still do that someday. Uh, one thing, though, I think that can safely be said about Sam uh, in terms of his his intellectual impact and his contribution to the free exchange of ideas. While I think it's probably still safe to say that it will be a very, very long time before a self-proclaimed atheist could be elected to public office in this country, unlike most countries in Western Europe, I think since Sam's pioneering book, and I think this is something that has to be applauded by everyone who believes in free speech and tolerance, that people who are not of faith at least have the comfort in social settings to acknowledge their lack of faith in a way that really has not been the case in, in much of American cultural and social tradition. Uh, Sam indicates that he himself didn't use the word atheist of his own opinions until after uh, his book but he again has, has generated, uh, uh, I think, enormous interest, controversy, uh, and debate. And I think that's healthy for people of faith as well as people without faith. I'm very pleased to introduce Sam Harris. How come you're all not at um, Walter Isaacson's talk on Einstein? Even I want to be at Walter's talk on Einstein. Um, well, you've all made a terrible mistake. I'll adjust this here. Well, I often, can you all hear me okay? I often begin any talk, talk on this subject with an apology because I think I am I'm destined to say, to say some very derogatory things about religion. And given that we live in a country where 90% of people believe in a biblical God, I think I'm destined to offend some of you here. Uh, I want to assure you that's not the point. It's not the point of my being here. It's not the point of my writing my books. I'm not being deliberately provocative. I'm simply extremely worried about the role that religion is playing in our world. Uh, I think religion is the most divisive and dangerous ideology that we have ever produced. Uh, and what's more, it's the only ideology that is systematically protected from criticism, both from within and without. Uh, it, it remains taboo. I mean, you, you, can, you can criticize someone's beliefs about, on, really on any subject, but it remains taboo to criticize their beliefs about God. And I think we're paying an extraordinary price for maintaining this taboo. So I'm going to break this taboo rather enthusiastically over the next hour. Uh, and I'll get, I will leave some time for questions, and I'm, I'm happy to take your, your criticism. Uh, I also want to, to point out up front, there's nothing that I'm about to say that should be construed as a denial of the possibilities of spiritual experience, and indeed of the, the importance of spiritual experience. And that's a subject I'll, I'll come back to at the end. But here's, here's my basic concern. 
our ability to cause ourselves harm is now spreading with 21st century efficiency. And yet we are still, to a remarkable degree, drawing our vision of how to live in this world from ancient literature. Th this marriage of, of modern technology, destructive technology, and Iron Age philosophy is a bad one for reasons that I think nobody should have to specify, much less argue for. And yet arguing for them has, has taken up most of my time since September 11, 2001. That day that, that 19 pious men showed our pious nation just how socially beneficial religious certainty can be. Now as someone who has spent a few years publicly criticizing religion, I've become quite familiar with how people rise to the defense of God. As it turns out, there are not a hundred ways of doing this. There appear to be just three. Either a person argues that a specific religion is true, or he argues that religion is useful, and indeed so useful that it might be necessary, or he argues that, that atheism is essentially another religion, dogmatic, intolerant, uh, or otherwise worthy of contempt. And I, I want to I differentiate these three strands of argument because they're, they regularly run together and any conversation between a believer and non-believers is, is liable to fall into one of these ruts. Let's, let's begin with the specific claim that a, a given religion is true. There are two problems with arguing this. The first is that, as Bertrand Russell pointed out over a century ago, they can't all be true. I mean, given the sheer diversity of, of religions on offer, even if we knew that one of them was absolutely true, I mean, even if we knew this was, this was God's multiple choice exam, is it A, Judaism, B, Christianity, C, Islam, even if we knew we were in this situation, every believer should expect to wind up in hell purely as a matter of probability. It, it, it seems to me this, this should give religious people pause when they, before they espouse their religious certainties. It never does, but it should. The second problem with arguing for the truth of religion is that the evidence for our religious doctrines is either terrible or non-existent. And this subsumes all claims about the existence of a personal God, the divine origin of certain books, the virgin birth of certain people, uh, the veracity of ancient miracles, all of it. Consider Christianity. The entire doctrine is predicated on the idea that the, the gospel account of the miracles of Jesus is true. This is, this is why people believe Jesus was the Son of God, divine, etc. This textual claim, this te textual claim is problematic because everyone acknowledges that the gospels followed Jesus' ministry by decades, and there, there's no extra biblical account of his miracles. But, but the, the truth is quite a bit worse than that. The, the truth is, even if we had multiple contemporaneous eyewitness accounts of the miracles of Jesus, this still would not provide sufficient basis to believe that these events actually occurred. Well, why not? Well, the problem is that firsthand reports of miracles are quite common, even in the 21st century. Um, I have met literally, literally hundreds at this point of Western educated men and women who think that their favorite Hindu or Buddhist guru has magic powers. It, all, the powers ascribed to these gurus are every bit as outlandish as those ascribed to Jesus. Uh, now I, I actually remain open to evidence of such powers, but the, the, the fact is that people who tell these stories desperately want to believe them. All to my knowledge lack the kind of corroborating evidence we should require before believing that nature's laws have been abrogated in this way. And, and people who, tr who believe these stories show an uncanny reluctance to look for non-miraculous causes. But it remains a fact that yogis and mystics uh, are said to be walking on water and raising the dead and flying without the aid of technology, uh, materializing objects, reading minds, foretelling the future, R right now. In fact, all of these powers have been ascribed to Satya Sai Baba, the, the South Indian guru, by an uncountable number of eyewitnesses. Now, he even claims to have been born of a virgin, which is not all that uncommon a claim in, his, in the history of religion. Or in history generally, Genghis Khan supposedly was born of a virgin, as was, was Alexander 
Apparently, parthenogenesis doesn't guarantee that you're going to turn the other cheek. Uh, but Satya Sai Baba is not a fringe figure. He's not the David Koresh of Hinduism. His followers threw a birthday party for him recently, and a million people showed up. So there are, there are vast numbers of people who believe he is a living god. You can even watch his miracles on YouTube. Prepare to be underwhelmed. Uh, I mean, it's true that he has an afro of sufficient diameter as to suggest a total detachment from the opinions of his fellow human beings, but I'm not sure this is reason enough to worship him. Uh, in any case, so consider, as though for the first time, the foundational claim of Christianity. The claim is this, that miracle stories of a sort that today surround a person like Satya Sai Baba become especially compelling when you set them in the pre-scientific religious context of the first century Roman Empire, decades after their supposed occurrence. We have Satya Sai Baba's miracle stories attested to by thousands upon thousands of living eyewitnesses, and they don't even merit an hour on the Discovery Channel. But you place a few miracle stories in some ancient books, and half the people on this earth think it a legitimate project to organize their lives around them. Does anyone else see a problem with that? <laughs> Speaking more generally, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are founded on the claim that the Bible and the Quran were dictated by the creator of the universe. There is a, there is a creator, there is a personal God, and he occasionally writes books. He doesn't, he doesn't code software, he doesn't produce films. Mel Gibson's claim to have been toiling all the while under the influence of the Holy Spirit, I think is probably an exception here. Uh, but in any case, God is principally an author of books. And this idea has achieved credibility because the, the contents of these books are deemed to be so profound that they could not possibly have been produced by the human mind. Please consider how implausible this is. Consider how differently we treat scientific texts and discoveries. In the year 1665, it was beginning in the summer of 1665, Isaac Newton went into isolation to dodge the outbreak of plague that was incidentally laying waste to the pious men and women of England. Uh, and when he, when he had emerged from his solitude, he had invented the integral and differential calculus he had discovered the laws of universal gravitation and motion. He had set the field of optics on its foundation. Now, many scientists think this is the most awe-inspiring display of human intelligence in the history of human intelligence. And yet, no one is tempted to ascribe this to divine agency. We know that th th these accomplishments were, were affected by a mortal, and a, and a very unpleasant mortal at that. <laughs> And yet literally billions of us deem the contents of the Bible and the Quran so profound as to rule out the possibility of, of terrestrial authorship. Now, given the depth and breadth of human achievement, I think this is almost a miracle in its own right. It seems to me a miraculous misappropriation of awe. It, it took two centuries of continuous human ingenuity on the, part of, on, on the part of some of the smartest people who have ever lived to significantly improve upon Newton's achievement. How difficult would it be to improve the Bible? I mean, anyone in this tent could improve this, uh, this supposedly inerrant text scientifically, historically, ethically, spiritually in a matter of moments. I mean, consider the possibility of improving the Ten Commandments. I mean, th this may seem to be setting the bar kind of high because these are, this is the only part of the Bible, the only text, that, the, that God felt the need to physically write himself and in stone. Consider the second commandment, thou shalt not erect any graven images. Is this really the second most important thing <laughs> upon which to admonish all future generations of human beings? I mean, is, this, is this as good as it gets, ethically?